Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today is the first video in my Reef Tank Basics series. And in this series, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about how to run a reef tank. Now, this isn't intended as an expert guide as such, it's more my experiences and opinions that I've built up over the years I've been in the hobby, and it's going to be based on how I run my tank, the Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500. Now, if it's your first time at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell, so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get stuck in. So in this deep dive series, I'm going to tell you my thoughts and experiences on lighting and flow, filtration and algae control, choosing and acclimating fish and corals, dosing, i.e. replenishing elements like calcium, alkalinity and magnesium, monitoring and control, maintenance and problems, and finally I'll tell you what you should think about when choosing your first upgrade, and I'll tell you why I'm not upgrading. But first up, we will of course start with the pros and cons of large and small tanks. My current tank is a Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500. It's 4 feet 2 inches long, 2 feet wide and 2 feet high. After displacement, it holds around 400 to 450 litres of water or around 100 to 120 US gallons. My previous tank was a nano tank at around 120 litres or 30 US gallons and just 2 feet by 18 inches by 18 inches. There's no simple answer as to whether it's better to go big or small, so I'll talk you through the pros and cons of each. Smaller tanks of course take up less room in your house, and while people like me are perfectly happy to fill half their living room with fish tank, there is a lot to be said for a tank you can keep on your desk or in the corner of a room. And ultimately if you spend most of your time at home in your bedroom or a home office, it makes a lot more sense to have a tank in there where you can enjoy it. Small tanks are also generally much quieter than large tanks for two reasons. Firstly because they have less equipment and secondly because they have lower powered equipment. On a small all-in-one tank without a sump, the only equipment you're likely to have that will make any sound is the pump that circulates water around the tank, the power head that creates flow in the display tank and possibly the lights if they have cooling fans. Small water pumps and power heads of course have small motors, which are generally quiet as they don't vibrate as much, and on a well set up all in one tank, the only noise you'll hear is a bit of gentle water movement. Although with that being said, cheap equipment is usually noisy, so you may need to upgrade a few stock parts. Larger tanks though, especially tanks with more demanding corals like SPS corals, are packed full of equipment that uses much more power and tends to create more vibrations as a result. And more powerful LEDs will also usually have cooling fans. The higher you turn any of that equipment up, the louder it gets. On my personal tank, I've spent a significant amount of time and money making it as quiet as possible, but it still always produces a constant low hum and various equipment kicks in at different time points making more noise. Smaller tanks are also less complicated and of course much much cheaper. Because you don't need so much equipment, you won't spend so much money. And you don't even have space for things like UV sterilizers, skimmers, refugiums, manifolds and various other complicated and expensive pieces of kit so there are fewer things to worry about. With many large tanks, the cost of livestock and ongoing maintenance massively outweighs the setup costs, but if you only have a limited amount of real estate, you can only spend a limited amount of money on corals. And most of the more expensive corals are generally only suitable for bigger tanks, which also means you'll be able to complete your tank much more quickly, and you can have a finished product within a year quite easily with a small enough tank, whereas larger tanks will take a lot longer to fill up, particularly if you choose slower growing corals. My tank for example is getting on for 3 years old and still isn't anywhere near finished. And maintenance is much easier on a small tank. On small tanks you'll just need a couple of buckets to do your weekly water change, and you can do it in a matter of minutes with a couple of jugs, whereas larger tanks of course need vats, and that is particularly important because you're more likely to do something if it's easy to do. You also won't have anywhere near as much glass to scrape algae off or as much equipment to clean. And with a small tank, fixing problems should also be cheaper and easier. For example, if you have high phosphate in a nano tank, you can do a few large water changes easily and cheaply to bring the levels down. Whereas doing the same on a large tank can be a massive undertaking. And one final underrated benefit of smaller tanks is that they are better places for inverts like shrimp and crabs. Because you won't have larger invert eating fish like wrasses, you can open up your world to keeping some awesome crabs and shrimps, many of which have fascinating personalities and awesome behaviours. They also contribute very little to your system's bio load, so you are far less restricted in the number of inverts you can keep than you are fish. 
So ease of management and lower cost are probably the main advantages of a smaller tank, but what about going big? Well, this is where my personal biases will come through. Larger tanks open you up to a whole world of variety. Most of the awesome fish in our hobby require more swimming space than you can give them in a nano tank. So you're not limited to things like gobies and clownfish, and crucially on that point, larger tanks are suitable for algae eating fish like tangs and rabbit fish, which means you're less likely to get an algae outbreak in a bigger tank. Because of the extra space, you can of course keep many more corals, but it's also much easier to keep aggressive corals that need to be kept apart from neighbors like many LPS corals. Many LPS corals will send out sweeper tentacles that are several inches long. If you have a big tank, it is much easier to give them room to do their thing without smoking everything in their path. And it can be easier to fix problems in a bigger tank. While larger water changes are a bit challenging, you'll have more space to add different filters. So if you have high nitrates and phosphates that are causing you algae problems, you can add a refugium, a UV steriliser, a phosphate reactor, a larger skimmer, and so on and so on. And the biggest benefit of going large is of course stability, or more to the point margin for error. After patience, the most important thing for a successful reef tank is stability of parameters. Whether that's keeping the temperature the same, or the salinity, or phosphates, or chemical elements like calcium, a larger volume of water is much less likely to experience parameter swings, and the margin error is also much greater. So if you accidentally add too much of something to your tank, it is less likely to have an immediate impact in a large tank drop in the ocean and all that. And a more stable tank is less likely to need maintenance from you, so in some ways, larger tanks can actually be lower maintenance than smaller tanks. For me, the additional real estate for corals, the extra swimming space for fish, and the greater margin for error are the main reasons a bigger tank is better. And while there really is no right or wrong answer, for those reasons, my opinion is that if you have the budget, a larger tank is probably a better bet for a beginner. So those are what I consider to be the pros and cons of going for a big tank or a small tank. But I'd love to know what you guys think and what your considerations are when choosing a tank, so let me know in the comments section which you prefer. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing. Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today is the first video in my reef tank basics the series. Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today is the first video in my Reef Tank Basics series. Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today is the first video in my Reef Tanks Reef Tank Basics Reef Tank Basics series.